Right, good afternoon. Uh, today we're going on multivariable stability and our Hurwitz approach to multivariable stability. And we're looking at the same example as the one we looked at previously 4 over s minus 3, minus 2 over s minus 3, 1 over s plus 1, 1 over s minus 1. And if we recall back to our Nyquist approach, this we knew that the answer in fact was kp is 3. So We'll just bear that in mind as we're going through the calculations as well. Now, the first thing that in order to apply the Hurwitz stability test, we have to remember this expression here. So this is PS, which is the open loop pose, times the determinant of I in determinant I plus GSKS equals zero. This is the equation now that will give us the closed loop stability equation. And once we've got the closed loop stability equation, we can then put the closed loop stability equation into the Hurwitz stability test. And I think the main important thing here is that in the Hurwitz stability test, you've got say A0s to the n plus A1s to the n minus 1 all the way down to A n equals 0 as the closed loop system. And in the whole stability test, there are two parts to the stability test. The first part is that all the coefficients have to be positive, and the second part involves working out some Hurwitz determinants. Now, for multivariable control systems of the type that we're looking at, we can just use the fact that all these coefficients have to be positive as part of our Hurwitz stability test. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression here, expand it out, into what's going to be eventually the closed loop characteristic equation, which is this one down here. And then we're going to put the, the constraint on that in order for the system to be stable, all the coefficients have to be positive. So that's these coefficients here have to be positive, and that will give us our stability conditions. But let's, before we get to this point, let's just go through the mathematics of it. So PS we can disregard for the moment. The main important thing is I plus GSKS to formulate this. So I is the unit matrix, so it's a 2 by 2 matrix, so that's going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. And then this here now is GSKS. So here's our GS and here's our KS. So we multiply this by this, this will pick up a KP, that will pick up a KP, that will pick up a KP, and that will pick up a KP. So that's where we've got to here. This is 4kp, minus 2kp, kp and kp. So next thing we do is we add these two together. So in adding these two together now, we're going to get, if we take the s minus 3 as a common denominator, to get s minus 3, that's the 1, plus 4kp over s minus 3. So that term there is that plus that. This term here is just going to be that term there. And this term here is just going to be that term there. And then this one is actually 1 plus this. So we get an s minus 1 plus kp. s minus 1 plus kp over s plus 1. So we can go from here down to this matrix here. So the next thing we do is we now got to work out the determinant. So determinant number 2 by 2 is very straightforward. It's this times this minus this times this. So we get this times this gives us this term here, that's that one, times multiplied by this one, divided by that times that, that's those two. Then the next one's going to be this times this, but it's a minus, so the minus times minus a plus 2kp times kp, 2kp squared, and on the bottom we've got s minus 3, s plus 1. So that's these two terms here. Now in order to Move on to the next stage, we've got to make the common, the bottom line have a common denominator. So if we add in an s plus 1 there and an s plus 1 there, and add in an s minus 1 and an s minus 1 there, then these two now have got the same denominator. And furthermore, this denominator is in fact ps. So that means now we can cancel this and this with this, which makes our calculation a little bit simpler. This always happens now 
that the when we make this part the same as this part, this part then will be the open loop poles, which will cancel with the open loop poles there. So that means that that disappears and that disappears. So that now gives us a simplified expression. So the next thing we've got to do now is multiply this by this by this and this by this. So this is what I've done here. So I've taken this times this first of all, multiplied by the s plus one. So s times s is s squared, s times minus s is minus s, s times kp is skp. Then minus three times s is minus three s, minus three times one is three, minus three times three kp, minus three kp. Then I've got to multiply by the one, so No, so I'm going to multiply by the kp. So kp times s gives us 4kp. 4kp times minus 1, minus 4kp. 4kp times kp, 4kp squared. So that's all those terms there now, is this times this. This part here, easier, 2kp s, 2kp squared s, and minus 2kp squared. So we've got one last trick now, which is to multiply this term here by the s plus one. So you can have a go at doing that, but it's quite straightforward. Just multiply everything here by s, and then multiply everything by one, and then add all the terms together. And remember to include these two terms here. So when we do that, we can simplify it down to this expression s cubed, plus 5kp minus 3 times s squared, 6kp squared plus 9kp minus 1 times s, and 2kp squared minus 7kp plus 3 equals 1. So when we multiply this term by that, adding those, it will simplify down to this term here. Now, we're now going back to a Hurwitz stability test, and what we need now is all the parameters here to be positive for the system to be stable. So if we look at this one here now, if we bear in mind our solution, we, we know our solution, we could solve this using that expression minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And we would find that one of the solutions now was in fact 3. And if we look at this in detail, so we had 3, 3 3 is a 9, 2 9 is 18 and 3 is 27, and 7 3 is a tw 21, sorry. 18 plus 3, 21, and 7 3 is a 21. So when kp is 3, this goes to 0. If kp is bigger than 3, this will be positive, and if kp is less than 3, this is negative. So this is how we can tell now that the solution to this is kp bigger than 3. But having got to this stage, we've got to check these parameters are okay as well, given that kp is bigger than 3. So if kp was bigger than 3, clearly this is bigger than 0, so that's fine. And if kp was bigger than 3, this would also be bigger than 0. So therefore we can conclude that the stability condition of this particular system is if kp is bigger than 3, all these coefficients are positive. If kp is equal to 3, this goes to 0. If kp is less than 3, this parameter goes negative. If any of these are negative, it goes unstable. So that is how we can do a multivariable stability using Hurwitz. And if you've just previously done this example using, say, a Nyquist stability test, you'd expect to get exactly the same answer from both. So just as a quick recap then, what we do is, we remember we're going to use the Hurwitz stability test, which is that in the closed loop system, closed loop stability equation, all the coefficients of the characteristic equation have to be positive. We can get at the closed loop characteristic equation through this expression here, PS into term of I plus GSKS equals naught, put the parameters in, and then work out our two by two determinant, simplify it all down to get our final closed loop stability equation, which is this one here. 
Having got this one then, look at these coefficients, and they very often have Kp squared in, unfortunately, because it's a two by two system. So get Kp times Kp, give me Kp squared. And then to solve these, you can either solve them by inspection. If you're not able to do that, you can always resort to the classical second order system formula, which will like, give you the numbers, and then you can try them in to make sure it's positive. So that is our conclusion to our Hurwitz stability. And as I say, this example is in three places now. We've got a Nyquist stability test for it. This is the Hurwitz stability test. And I've also run it as a little simulation for you as well. So you can understand it from three different points of view. And this is about as complicated as you'd expect to get in any, any question. Okay, great, thank you.